Good morning, everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Vincent Manger in French, but you can say Vincent Branger, I'm used to it, no problem. And uh, I'm here with uh, Jonathan. I'm jo Jonathan Meunier. I know it's kind of hard to pronounce, but you can just say Jonathan, it's fine. So uh, we are working for Infralis. Infralis is a consulting company in France, and you have uh, in front of you 100% of the people, of the employees. OK, we're on with you. And we are working on desktop virtualization, and uh, we are working <coughs> for uh, our customer to uh, explain how, the, how it works and uh, what the problems are, and so on. Uh, but before to begin uh, with security and client failure, I would like to make uh, some uh, update. Uh, I, I had a presentation last year about uh, antivirus and um, uh, VDI. And uh, uh, we, we have some issues in France with a virus called uh, sarcode.exe, uh, very tough one. And uh, it, it was in France since uh, 2007. And uh, uh, last year, I, I said we hope that it, uh, it would stop in, uh, uh, so this year. So I can confirm that sarcode.exe is completely destroyed by the French people. It's a very good news, I can show you. So the Avenger Angela for today. We will talk about laptops. We will go very quickly about that because, of course, we, we know oh, why we need laptops. Then uh, we will discuss, so Jonathan will discuss about the security cake and where are the uh, type 1 hypervisor uh, here. And I will present then uh, one user case. Uh, this is the reason for this presentation, this user case, because uh, at the end of the last year, uh, one of my customers uh, called me to uh, uh, make uh, study or comparison study between Zen client and any stop from virtual computer uh, in order to know what is the best one to ensure security. So that's why we did uh, this presentation uh, now and we present our results uh, today. Uh, as you know, of course, since a few weeks, Citrix bought virtual computer. So our presentation is really done with a comparison. But anyway, it would be interesting because you know that uh, any stock from virtual computer will, uh, will be uh, the Xen client enterprise version uh, from Citrix. Okay, so it would be interesting to compare Xen client express, so the old one, and uh, Zen client enterprise any stock. Then Jonathan will uh, do a little demo of, uh, to, to try to hack a VM. And then we will make a QA error and uh, some conclusion. So, first uh, topic. So, laptop, of course, even if I see a lot of uh, iPad and tablets, we are using a lot of laptops in enterprise. And uh, in 2010, it was a, a very important step because more than the half of uh, computer uh, were laptops in the enterprise in average, of course. And the reason is the mobility. However, we know, also the Gartner said, that it's very difficult to manage a laptop. It's more difficult than a, a simple desktop. And we have some uh, several additional issues, like uh, a laptop can be stolen, can be lost, and etc. Gartner said that the only way to manage the laptop in order, in order to have a better PCO is to have a lockdown PC. However, the lockdown PC for a user, for a mobile user, is something very difficult to have. So uh, one of the solutions is to have two VMs. You know, like uh, bring your own PC uh, uh, devices and so on. And the aim is to have one corporate VM and one personal VM. The corporate VM will be locked with a low PCO, and the personal VM can be, uh, I would say, more open. However, it, it must be secure, of course. So, we can ask some questions about that. The first one is, what if the personal VM interferes with the corporate VM? We have two VM on the hypervisor. Can they communicate between each other? It's a question. 
Second one, what if the laptop is stolen or lost? Can I take the hard drive, for example, or to um, download the VHD file in order to open it in another Zen client or in VirtualBox, for example, it's possible. So that's an, another question. What's happened if the personal VM, because perhaps the personal VM is less secure or less locked down than the corporate one, what's happened if this VM is infected and access then to the company network? Is it possible to control that or not? And of course, there is an hypervisor. It's another layer on your laptop. And the question is, can the user access to the hypervisor? in order to make some bad case. So I let now Jonathan to explain Thank you. the security case. So yeah, so we have all these concerns uh, about security uh, when it comes to uh, client hypervisors. So for my part, I will review all the solutions uh, available uh, to solve these uh, problems. So with uh, client hypervisors, you got, of course, several points of uh, security uh, potential risks. So of course, the first one is the hardware. Um, there is a lot of uh, rootkits or viruses going directly on the hardware. And another point is the storage. What if your data is corrupted? How to avoid this? Another one is the hypervisors. Uh, more and more now you can install a virus directly on the hypervisors and intercept or, I don't know, corrupt all the data. You got also the network. That's pretty easy to see. So it's, you have uh, within the client hypervisors, so you got several VMs and the DOM0 VM, which uh, acts like a router. So you can see that you got uh, several points of failure here. Of course, you got uh, the VMs, the users, and the administration console, which is basically the manager. So first, to uh, avoid the hardware issue, you got a technology bring by Intel, which is called uh, TXT. And it comes with uh, Intel vPro. So it was not uh, designed, for especially for client hypervisors, you can find this technology more uh, in da data centers and uh, the cloud. And basically, what it does, it will take uh, uh, a, a print of a good known value of the, the firmware, the BIOS, and the hypervisor and it will store it in uh, TPM, which is location encrypted uh, to store this value. And at each, uh, each boot, it will compare the value of the, hyper the, fine, the firmware, the BIOS, and the hypervisor to this good known value stored in TPM to ensure that you got a safe environment, a safe boot environment to to start your hypervisor and later on your VM. And if the hypervisor is corrupt, or the firmware or the BIOS, the the laptop just won't start. On the on the storage perspective, the first uh, thought which comes through your mind is, of course, the disk unscript, uh, encryption. So you, you got several techniques. One of them is to uh, encrypt the, the, the whole disk. Another one is to encrypt only the, the VM disk, the VHD file. Of course, you can see that if you encrypt the full disk, it will take uh, a little bit more time to do it. Because you will, uh, you will enter a password to of course, encrypt the disk, and it's obvious that if you have uh, you have to encrypt the, the whole disk, it's like now 
uh, with this kind of laptop is two, 200 gigs. It will take a little bit more time, but only 80 gigs for just one VM. And the encryption takes place either uh, during the installation of the client hypervisor or it can be done uh, afterwards and managed by the, the administration control. So as I said, for the protection of the hypervisor, you got uh, TXT, who does it works. And one of the protection is also the direct access to DOM0. So DOM0 is a service VM which manages the, well, the VMs itself. And, uh, and the, the for example, client will manage the interface of the client hypervisor. So one protection is to uh, is not to allow the access of this service VM DOM, DOM zero to the users. Of course, it should be available for the administrators, but you don't want the users to mess with uh, DOM zero because if they if they do, uh, well, the client hypervisor won't work anymore. So you want to protect that. about the network management and the network card management. Um, basically, what you want is to manage the access of the VM to the corpor corporate network. So how do you do that? You can use uh, a NAC to, of course, control the access. But well, you have a solution like this, you want to avoid that. You want a solution embedded within the client hypervisor to manage the, the, the association of a network card to a VM. For instance, if it's a personal VM, you, maybe you don't want to allow this VM on the network, so you will say something, yeah, I won't associate this NIC to the personal VM, I just want the NIC to be associate, associated with the, the, the corporate VM. That's ideally what you what you want to do. Of course, to protect the virtual machines, you got policies and patches, which is, is kind of obvious. And with client hypervisors, you also have um, an administration console, a manager, which will uh, manage these policies or not. You can do automatic backups, so you can schedule a, a backup. You can also do it manually to save your VMs and your data and take it out of the client hypervisor in case of it breaks. And of course, with that, you can snap back to uh, an image or a snapshot of your VM. That's the technique you use to protect your VM even with VDI. And an, another feature uh, which came with uh, client hypervisor is an expiration date of the VM. What it does is that when you, will, when you deploy a VM on a client hypervisor, you can say, OK, this VM will be avail available for I don't know, 14 days. After that, either the VM will be destroyed or it will be locked down. So you the user won't be able to use it. And it ensure that it can ensure that um, on a on a on a I don't know if you say for instance uh, the expression date is a week. It means that within a week the user have to connect to the the manager, the administration console, to ensure that the laptop is not stolen, for instance. So, well. The obvious use case is you lost your, uh, your laptop with all your VMs on it and all your data. And after a week, the VM will be locked down and nobody will, uh, could access it anymore. So when the, every client hypervisor, every laptop will be associated with uh, 
can be associated with a user. So you have to manage the uh, authentication of this user. So some techniques are just, well, password and ID uh, accounts, and got also things like uh, fingerprint, secure ID, and more and more of these uh, technologies are supported by client hypervisors, and that's a really good thing. And there is also um, authentication when you connect to the manager. It's not uh, um, filtered by a MAC address or whatever. You will just connect to a server uh, as in any of the servers and enter your credential to connect and download your VMs. So we got all these features, but now we, we want to know if they are actually uh, used in the different product. Like, so we compare ZenClient 2.1, ZenClient XT, and uh, NextUp, of course. So about ZenClient 2.1. So between uh, the previous version of Zen Client and this one, uh, the compatibility, compatibility list of uh, the laptops was enhanced. And but the reason is that uh, there is no TXT available. So the laptop uh, doesn't have to be V Pro. But and that's pretty bad then. The VM uh, disk inscription is using AES256. Uh, and so ZenClient 2.1 will not encrypt the, the whole disk, but it will encrypt only the VHD files. So DOM0 is not encrypted at all. DOM0 will be accessible by the users only by typing uh, control shift T and it will be only protected by a password. That's a pretty bad thing because well nowadays a password is pretty easy thing to 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 hack. So yeah so basically here I am with uh Zen client. Here you can see so I'm logged in with a regular account. So I just have to type this. And then I, I got a potential access to DOM0, we can see here. And the same thing happens with Annex top. You will see later on. So it's only, yeah, if I just file the password, here I am. That's that easy. About the, the networking, so there is not a lot of things done uh, with uh, uh, network protection on client hypervisors. You can just say uh, on same clients, yeah, I will uh, enable this card, or you can say, uh, the, the wireless will be shared or using a 3G connection or with a wire connection you can just say if it's bridged, bridged or um, not and that's all. So you can't do anything. That's pretty bad. And on virtual machines, so you, the, the, the manager will um, well manage uh, the updates of uh, the VMs and also the version, but that's all. There is no enhanced capacity to to manage the, the VMs. And you can uh, schedule automatic backups or manual backups. And you got uh, the feature of the expiration date, which is pretty cool. Last week, uh, I haven't used my, uh, my Xen client for a week. And uh, when I came back, I saw my uh, my VM locked down, so I had to reconnect to my synchronizer 
to unlock them. On the user level security, so you just have to uh, authenticate like a normal desktop on your Xen clients. You have to authenticate with the manager when you want to uh, download the end or uh, save them. And you got something also an additional and optional uh, security, it's called the registration pin. When you will register uh, your Xen client, it means when you will associate your Xen client to a user, and so to do that, connect to the synchronizer, the manager, you can decide to uh, add security level by um, giving the user a registration pin, which is basically um, a, a password of six or seven letters. So that's not great, but that's still a uh, security uh, enhancement. And for the administration console, it, so it's a virtual appliance uh, running on Xen server, and only Xen server for now. And you can set up uh, uh, SSL certificates. Uh, first, when so there is two certificates: one for the web management, the web uh, console, and one to between the the client hypervisor and the manager. And of course, the administration console is password protected. On ZenClient XD, so. It was designed uh, for uh, government agencies, so it was designed to be more secure than the 2.1 version. So for XT, they, uh, they support T <coughs> TXT. So as I said, it will check the firmware, the BIOS, and the hypervisor at, uh, at startup, and ensure that you have safe environments for your hypervisor and your VM. So we, we've seen that uh, ZenClient 2.1 was using IES 2.5.6, and the XT version is using also IES and uh, IES NI. IES NI is a hardware feature will, uh, with which will uh, improve the, the capacity of IES. It will make it faster, and yeah, basically that's it. And to isolate the, the, the networks between all the VMs, they separate the network features, uh, which was on DOM0 for the 2.1 uh, version of Xen Client. And so they made a separate VMs, VM just to manage network and ensure the, the isolation between all the VMs. And on the, the virtual machine level, you have more policies to, to apply to your VMs, and more isolation, of course, as I said, between the VM. On the hypervisor level, you have, they use uh, SE Linux and security policies, which are not used uh, on the 2.1 version. That was a um, necessity so for the government agency, which was uh, NSA. So it's, it's really not a, a version of the 2.1 uh, Xen client, but it's really a fork from the 1.1, so the, the previous version. On the user level, so it, there is no improvement uh, compared to the 2.1 version. It's exactly the same. And the, the synchronizer is also the same. You have more features, but the security for that is the same. So we, we had one problem when we wanted to test it, uh, Xen Client XD. It, it's that you can't download it for free uh, on the Citrix website. It's not possible every time you end up to downloading the, downloading the, the 2.1 version. And 
uh, we want it, so we ask Citrix to get it, if, if we can get it for testing. And the problem is, is that it's not available in France. So there, is, there was no way for us to get it uh, for testing. So that, that's pretty bad. Especially if you are in front of your customer and you say, yeah, you, you, it appears that you need some kind of XT. So we will try to download it and test it for you. And you came back a week later and said, yeah, that's not, that's not possible. So maybe you don't need it and you need the 2.1 version. It will be easier. That's pretty bad. About next up, so there is no support for TXT, and that that uh, enables them to support a lot of uh, laptops. But yeah, it's not a good thing for security. As I said, it's a full disk encryption, and by default, using IES two five six and IES NI. So when you will associate a user to your Xen client, of course, it will requir require a password. And uh, automatically, the, the full disk will be encrypted. So the downside is it will take a little time to, to do this. And be, during this time, you can't use your laptop. So that's a downside, but that's the need of security. On a network level, the the thing is, it's it's on it was because now we don't really know. Uh, it was on their roadmap to enhance uh, security features on a network level because that was one of uh, our customer needs, but it was not yet available. We wanted more security for the uh, the wireless network. So here again, the only thing you can do is to uh, set if you want to use NAT or if you want the connection to be breached. And um, yeah, basically, you know that you can't do security with NAT. It's just not true. So again, there is not a lot of things done uh, for network security. So you might still want to use a network access controller. And next up is very good with uh, policies and patches management. There is a, a whole uh, bunch of features to do this, and you can manage uh, GPOs directly within the manager of any stuff. And that's pretty good, and that's one thing that Zen Client uh, doesn't do correctly. But that's pretty impressive. Of course, you have also automatic backups, golden image sna snapback, and expression that as Zen Client. But the, 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 the really good thing, again, about NXTOP is the management of the, the VMs. And all of these uh, policies you can set directly uh, from the manager. That's really impressive. Here again, the hypervisor or the DOM0 VM is only protected by a password. You, you, you can't see it. Uh, directly from the, the interface, but it's there, and it's only it's only one password to to access it. And oh, it's a typo. On the user level perspective, it's uh, about the same um, as in Xen clients. So you have to authenticate when you log in the client hypervisor and when you access the, or you connect to the manager. But the little difference between Nextop and Zen Client is that you can, uh, the administrator can, uh, is, uh, he doesn't have to uh, associate a user to the, the, the client hypervisor, the Nextop. You can just connect the device to the manager, not associated with a particular user. So it will be like a station, but you put it somewhere and many users can access it. That's something you can't do with Xen Client. With Xen Client, one device means one user. 
And uh, the administration console is an application on Windows Server, and it has to be linked on Hyper-V. And so basically, if you want to secure your application, you need to secure your server also. So that's one point. And uh, there is there is a uh, few features uh, to secure the application. You can do a remote, uh, you got a remote manager and a central manager, stuff like this. Well. So what we can say, uh, what we can conclude from, from this little study is that uh, one thing is that you there is just one password to access uh, the hypervisor. If you're a user, you've seen that. If you have the password, you can access term zero, and that's, that's pretty bad. So there will be some, some work to do there to ensure that term zero is not uh, available for the users, but only for administrators. Another thing is the TXT support. It's only available for Xing uh, for Xen Client XT, but again, to uh, get Xen Client XT, it's pretty hard. And we tried very hard, and uh, yeah, we, we didn't succeed to get it. And there is also uh, some issues with the, so with the isolation of, uh, of the VMs. And the the only one capable to do this is Xen Client XT, but again, it's not that easy to get it. And I will show you uh, later on with a little demo. It's very easy to hack uh, the system and see all the network uh, flow within the hypervisor. And uh, one problem we had uh, at a customer is that we, the customer wanted to, um, to avoid that the personal VM access <coughs> the network. So one solution was to, to say that if you want to access the network, even the LAN, you have to, um, you have to connect through a VPN, even to, to your LAN. So that's pretty bad. And that's only to ensure that only the corporate VM uh, access the network. And yeah, so there is no, no way yet to, to do a, a proper network uh, security management without uh, net network access control. You can't, can't manage that with the current product. Any network when outside of the company. Okay? 
and uh, the user could allocate recipes to VM as needed, but only for the client this one. The corporate one is completely isolated, okay? And uh, we cannot change uh, this one. And one of the requirements of the customer was that both VM cannot work together at the same time, okay? And that's not so easy to, uh, to, to ensure. So when we make the, the POC, we make a POC with then client to that one and any stop. And uh, the first turnaround we used, uh, a very simple one, was to allocate all the physical RAM, uh, available RAM, to the corporate VM so that the other VM cannot run when the corporate VM is running. Okay? So, to be honest, it's just a trick because it's not very secure. I can add physical memory if it is possible, for example. So it's just a, a simple trick to uh, avoid some issues, but if, if the laptop is stolen and uh, there is a hacker that wants to really to hack, uh, it's really possible. So, one simple issue, it was a customer with uh, um, VMware Hyper Vizo. So they don't have access to any Hyper-V uh, or Zen server, uh, server uh, in order to install, to install either uh, the synchronizer on Zen server or the management console uh, from a virtual computer. So we, we just printed a, a small server and it was, it was okay for that. Um, one of the most important problems for this customer was the lack of isolation between VM because we, we are really on the same subnetwork and we can pin two VM uh, running. Okay, it's really easy. And of course, uh, as Jonathan already said, there is no uh, guarantee to uh, ensure the integrity of the IPR resource. If we change the IPR resource, we can hack the IPR resource and we cannot ensure that the IPR resource doesn't work. Okay, it's not because of uh, uh, the, uh, the lack of uh, TXP support. So, the conclusion was Zen Client TXP is needed. We must have this version of Zen Client as described on the Secret website and in some presentation we can find on the internet. So, how to get Zen Client TXP? If you go to the Secret website, you can try to download it. You have really a page with download the client XP. And when you click on it, you arrive on the download page of the client to the one. Okay? So thank you. So then I call Citric France. I think the same applies for UK, Germany, and so on. I'm not sure, but perhaps we are special. But I call uh, Citric France to explain why we need the client XP. Then the pre-sales guy tell me that, okay, we will organize a meeting with the Citrix uh, Zen Client Product Manager and your customer. Okay, okay, why not? And why? So, why? Because the Product Manager will explain to you how to not use Zen Client XT. Uh-huh, but I want it. No, no, you don't need it. Very strange. Step four, go to step one. So, unfortunately, we didn't test it, okay? I think there is some intellectual property issue because the 1.1 was developed by the NEC for Citrix, and so it's weird, but uh, for us in France, it was impossible to uh, work with the entire So, eventually they chose uh, Zenkian 2.1 with a VPN access from the corporate VM to ensure some security level on the uh, LAN, on the local area network. But if I am a hacker, if I add memory, if uh, uh, I can uh, put some uh, root kit on the personal VM and so on, I can do something. I, I have the possibility. Okay, I mitigate the risk, I agree with that. But it's possible to do something, to try to do something, okay? So, 
Ja. Yeah, really fun. Uh, so, thank you. We try really to to act uh, to the client, just for fun. Uh, both the same client and the manager the synchronizer. So first, we had uh, a locked lockdown VM, so the the, the DHD files were encrypted. So I, I tried to extract them and to uh, use them on client server. Fortunately for them, I didn't succeed to do this. So yeah, that doesn't work. And then then I just try a, a nmap on the virtual machine, the hypervisor, and so the, uh, the hypervisor dun zero, and the synchronizer. So first, on the Windows 7 VM with <coughs> an uh, antivirus, firewall, everything. So there is nothing but the 135 TCP uh, port open. And that's all you can see. For DOM zero, it doesn't even detect the the the, the OS, so that's well, <coughs> pretty good thing. And because I enabled uh, SSH during the installation, so you can see uh, that it's open. Of course, it's maybe something you don't want to do. And you can so see the 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 SSH key and some few other things, but basically you don't see a lot. Same thing on the, the hypervisor, so you've got 22 open and it doesn't see the, the OS type. So before uh, the, conc uh, yeah, the conclusion, I will do a live demo on how, how to hack a little bit clean clients. So here you got the Windows 7 VM and here, so let's say this is the corporate VM. Let's say this, but this VM is the personal one, XP SP3. So here I got Wireshark, and I don't know if you know it, kind which is uh, well a good hacking product. So what I want to do is that um, so here you got a wireless card, and you got the same thing on the uh, Windows Seven VM. Okay. When the laptop is not connected to any network, the VM doesn't have any IP address. Okay, so you can't see anything because well, the VM doesn't have an IP, so you can't attack it from the outside. For the purpose of the demo, I will use my uh, cell phone as uh, an access point. So if you go here, it will take a little time to uh, refresh. Okay, here I am. So now my VMs got an IP address with, uh, within the, the, the internal network of the same clients. So how it works is that DOM0 have, has an external IP address between so my access point and DOM0, and it has also an internal address so between DOM0 and the VMs, and it's uh, using NAT. So if I access DOM0, okay, here is my external IP address, so between my access point and DOM0, and <coughs> here, uh, here is my internal IP address. Okay. 
here on my uh, Windows 7 VM. Yep, I got this IP address, 2610, and here I'm 2611. So what I want to do here, what I want to, to achieve is to intercept the communication between my Windows 7 VM and my Drum Zero. Uh, if I can do this, basically I can see any traffic between uh, the, the Drum Zero and my Windows 7 VM. And uh, for instance, if uh, my Windows 7 VM access the internet, I will see it. So what I'm gonna do here is just to uh, ping my um, DOM0 VM. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, it's working. And then from here, So now I'm listening to my network, and so you don't see any uh, ICMP traffic. So that's, uh, of course, uh, expected. But if you want to, if you use this little tool, uh, yeah, okay, here. So now what I'm gonna do is to uh, uh, do RIP poisoning to put my uh, personal VM between my uh, Windows 7 VM and DOM0. So with this technique, I will be able to see the traffic. And here we go. You can see uh, appearing here all the ICMP traffic between my Windows 7 VM. So 2610 and my uh, DOM0 VM 26.1. So what it means is that if I, if, if, if it's that easy to see this traffic here, basically if my personal VM is corrupted, uh, well, it can uh, easily affect my, uh, my uh, corporate VM if it's not well protected and well isolated on the network level. So that's that's simple. Uh, Enix will become in June uh, Ben Client Enterprise 
and uh, the management council will be uh, available uh, in, uh, in next month uh, on this fair and on uh, June server, so it could be better for some customer. Uh, but we don't know exactly uh, what will happen uh, regarding KXC. So we really uh, show that we have two major issues with uh, security and uh, type one uh, hyper reserves. First one, network management between VMs and between DOM0. So it should be uh, managed with an exertion, but we still have the issue with KC. If we are not able to uh, ensure the integrity of the hyper reserve, it's always possible to do something, okay? We didn't succeed to hack the system, okay? But there is a door, it's open. I think it's very difficult to, to do it, but a good hacker can do it for us, okay? So that's the, the main uh, issue. And uh, regarding the internet enterprise, we don't know exactly what will happen on that. Uh, they will clearly uh, use uh, any stop for the, their management capabilities, uh, much better than the uh, other former of the client version, but we don't know the, uh, the other uh, roadmap uh, announced um, two weeks ago in uh, San Francisco. So, do you have uh, uh, any question? To me or to Jonathan? Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you.
up for like two minutes or three minutes, which is not good when presenting. And um, uh, but I never had the opportunity to check the, uh, the security uh, aspect of it. Oh so. uh, yeah, the, the the aim was to summarize two projects we did this year, so we didn't work with uh, Windows 8. That's uh, too early. It's too early. It was too early. Okay, but that, that's going to be next month. Huh? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> So I, I think it's difficult to say. So uh, the, the customer decided uh, eventually to use the entire disk to dot one and to have a VPN connection from the corporate uh, machine. So I think it's it's okay in terms of security, but it's, I think it's difficult to use a VPN connection in the LAN. So for the user, it's not so easy. In terms, it's not user friendly, I would say. Uh, however, it was the only uh, available solution. I want to I want to know your opinion about something. Uh, I mean, if I'm looking at Ventify, which shares the same architecture with uh, Hyper-V, you have that parent partition and the child partition. Now you have that parent partition running on the physical box, and uh, the parent partition is necessary for the child partition to communicate to the network and to communicate to the VM box. Now, how are you sure you're able? child VM in a way that is secure enough because what if I'm able to inject a driver that is monitoring what's going on because all the traffic that comes from the child VM is channeled through the parent VM. How do you want to make sure that nobody is able to compromise that, that flow of data that goes through the parent partition? Uh, because we are thinking about military, we are thinking about What is your opinion? Will that be possible? So even, I, even if you have the trusted platform chips uh, running on the on, on the machine, I have my serious doubts that you really can protect a child VM where all the traffic goes to the parent. That's, it, that's an architectural thing. Yeah. Yes, I completely uh, agree with you. Uh, I think um, th th why we are we, we say that XC is, is mandatory is just to protect the IPR reserve, the integrity. So it's mandatory, but it is enough. I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think we, we, can, we cannot trust all the communication between uh, DBM, uh, so the child part parti uh, partition. Uh, so the best way to do is to have uh, several uh, um, partitions, so primary partition, and one dedicated for network, one dedicated for VPN, for example, uh, uh, like uh, Gentile and XC. So I think that's the way, but is it enough? I'm really not sure. But this is going to be the question that yeah, sure, the sure. users, well, the, the customers will ask the vendor. <laughs> but so zero sec so uh, full security is not possible anyway. So we have to mitigate all the risk. We have to, to challenge that, and uh, so I think we need to do that. But it's surely not uh, not enough. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we so the question is about uh, uh, antivirus uh, uh, solution uh, on the hyper reader. So I, I I made this presentation last year. Uh, so it's like for example uh, Makati move or this deep security bots. So it's VM they communicate between each other at the hyper reader level. Uh, so it's good for management and security of the uh, so management of the signature. Uh, and uh, security, but what I saw uh, during my test and uh, my uh, work with my customer, it this VM is a new bottleneck. You know, because all the traffic go to this VM to analyze the virus, and if you have too many uh, uh, VM, anyway, you have another bottleneck, a new bottleneck. I agree. It's better. It's better, but I think it's not good enough for me. For me, but it's better than having one uh, antivirus uh, agent per VM. Yeah. So in this scenario that you were showing, would each VM have its own antivirus? Uh, it's yeah. So it, it's different because you really work on uh, a VM. You don't have uh, so much issues with. Uh, uh, 
Uh, so you have issues with Zion, but not uh, the same as if you have uh, 50, 70 VM on one server. It's really secure. Here yeah, you, you just have one, two, three VM, so it's okay. And uh, we have a Oh, no. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs>